Hi and welcome to another Italy Vino and from today it's an Italy Vino with a difference. We've done about 14 episodes of Italy Vino so far and each time we featured two or three different bottles of wine which means we're getting on for about 40 everyday red and white Italian wines that we've tasted so far over the series. Well what I'd like to do starting now is to ramp it up a little bit, reduce the uh, frequency of Italy Vino to one a month and in future as this one it's going to be out on the first of every month and we're going to be featuring special Italian wine. Italian wines for a really good meal, a really good celebration, the kind of wine you want to buy when you want to push the boat out a little bit and get the very best for your money. And the wine we're going to start with is called Nebbiolo d'Alba. It comes from Piedmont which is for my money the best wine growing region in all of Italy. Now I know everybody will say well what about Tuscany and of course some absolutely magnificent wines do come from Tuscany but for me Piedmont which is the area in the northwest of Italy centered around Turin produces the finest wines in all of the country. Red and some good white ones as well and the reason for this is that in Piedmont is the stronghold of a great variety called Nebbiolo. Nebbiolo is one of the great red wine grapes in the world. It produces Barolo and a fine Barolo from Piedmont is every bit the equal of the very best first growth Chateau bottle claret that you would find in Bordeaux. It's a wine that uh, Barolo this is, it's a wine that has tremendous aging properties and Barolo is the great 100% that goes into it and as I say for my money it can't be beat. And this is as good an introduction to uh, the Nebbiolo grape as you're going to find. This particular bottle Nebbiolo d'Alba is the 2008 vintage which was a very very good consistent vintage right across Piedmont. It's produced by a long-standing uh, winery called Azienda Gomba. Gomba is uh, based in the town of Barolo itself and produces some magnificent Barolo wines. This comes from the town of Alba which is uh, midway between Turin and Genoa. Wonderful wine growing country. 100% Nebbiolo grape. 13.5% uh, proof and uh, what we're going to do is uh, a little change from the ordinary is, uh, is open it in real time because what I want to do is try and recapture as far as it is possible the experience that, that you will have when a bottle of wine is opened for you in a restaurant or you open a bottle for that special meal at home. So if something goes wrong it'll go wrong. So we get out the, the trusty butler's friend which has been with me for quite a long time. I got this oh good gosh seven or eight years ago in Tuscany and uh, it has opened many a bottle since. Now right away we can see that this is a cork as opposed to a plastic bottle closure. And it's at these moments that things can come horribly unstuck but we will uh, with glasses and bottles <laughs> flying everywhere but we will we will trust to luck and see how we go and the good news is that this one is coming out pretty easily now first thing have a quick sniff of the cork it's done to excess in some rather fancy restaurants but if anything is wrong with the bottle and fortunately with increases in, uh, in quality control in, in the vast majority of winemakers and bottling plants now uh, a bad bottle of wine, an off bottle of wine is thankfully a thing of the past but if something is wrong a quick whiff of the cork will provide a pretty instant, um, a pretty instant giveaway. Um, it's all sometimes worth a look at the cork as well because it can just give you a little bit of extra information um, and 
this tells me that this particular wine um, has been bottled uh, by Azienda Gomba, the makers. It hasn't been sent off to some bottling plant and a giant great tanker to be put into bottle. It has been grown in local vineyards around Alba. It has been uh, processed in the uh, Azienda Gomba winery. Uh, this particular wine will have been uh, left, will have been crushed, left in contact with the with the skins and the stalks for about a week, seven or eight days. Uh, given a little time in in steel vats to settle down, then put in wood, left in wood for however long the winemaker would have thought necessary, and then finally given a. a at least six months in bottle before release. This, as I say, is the uh, is the 2008 vintage, so it will have had a good amount of time in both wood and bottle prior to release. Um, it's always a good idea uh, to open the bottle um, half an hour or so, uh, if you can, before you're going to drink it. I know uh, a great many people place a great store on decanting wine before it's it's drunk and yes it can be a very good idea if you're drinking a particularly old bottle of wine that might have thrown a lot of sediment uh, during its time in a wine cellar. Um, generally speaking though for a wine like this which has not got a huge amount of bottle age to it um, if you feel like decanting it why not but it's certainly not essential. So we're going to Pour it into the glass now, and this is a light colour, and like with all decent wines, take a look at it first of all. Hold it up some light, and what you're looking for is a nice, clear, bright finish. No little imperfections, certainly no cloudiness. Um, with some wines, again, especially old wines, if they've been sort of shaken about on the trip up to the cellar, up from the cellar to your table in, in a restaurant, and the wine waiter is particularly clumsy or doesn't know his job well enough, sediment can get shaken up and all sorts of unpleasantness can occur. But this is absolutely jewel crystal bright and a lovely scent as well. On an old, aged uh, wine made from Nebbiolo grape, you will see a telltale uh, brick orange colour um, around the rim. Uh, not dissimilar, claret, when it gets older, takes on a sort of bricky red colour. Around the rim of the glass, uh, an, an old Nebbiolo will take on a not dissimilar hint of colour. Now, in the glass, a scent of dark fruit I'm getting. This is 2008, uh, made three years ago. Um, young Nebbiolos can be uh, very tannic. Um, to start with, a young wine, there will be traces of black fruit, uh, Maybe a little sort of tarry uh, scent as well. And now that I'm giving it a little bit of warmth in my hand, it's releasing more and more and more. It's a very heady wine, this. And I love, <laughs> I love wine made from the Nebbiolo grape. What are these? necessary pauses in the conversation when you're tasting wine. Yes, there are some tannins there, but pleasant tannins, not the kind of tannins that strip the enamel off your teeth. This is a wonderfully well-made wine. Almost a red rose like scent in the glass, a little bit of tar, dark fruits, autumn fruits, uh, plums, mulberries, damsons in particular.
a little bit of tannin just dries the mouth, as I said, not unpleasantly. Take some air in and a long, long finish. Still there. Hallmark of a good wine, a very good wine indeed. Almost just as it disappears, just a little a little twang of violets, scent of violets in the mouth. Uh, you will pay in Italy somewhere around 15 to 20 euros for a bottle like this. And it has tremendous, tremendous ageing potential. Um, really uh, a good Barolo, uh, good Barolo, <laughs> um, uh, a good bottle of wine made with uh, the Nebbiolo grape, like this um, Nebbiolo Alba, um, will start hitting its stride after about five years. It will start developing the complexities and depths and characteristics that you would expect from the Nebbiolo grape. Uh, now it's still an absolutely excellent bottle of wine uh, and the great news is that you can keep this if you have the, the willpower for 10 years and, and it will repay that keeping um, a million fold. It will just get better and better and better. Um, what to drink it with? What to, what to pair it with? Well, this will go, it goes without saying, with any good rich meat dishes. Um, Piedmont is the home not only of wine, lucky people in Italy, but the, the truffle as well. And they make big use of truffles in their cooking. Uh, a rich game sauce to go with pasta made with, with hare or wild boar. Uh, some of the more pungent Italian cheeses will go very well with this. And when it's got a little bit older, a little bit softer, when those tannins have started to relax a little bit, it will be the sort of wine that you could sip reflectively, seated by, uh, seated by an open fire in the middle of winter. Now, a wine to drink alone? Perhaps not. It's a wine, this particular bottle is a wine best suited to accompany food. So, there we are. Nebbiola d'Alba. It comes under the um, the brand name of Albier, uh, which is a trade name given by the uh, the Gomba Winery. Um, it is exported. You might well find it in uh, in local uh, specialist wine shops near to where you live. Not the sort of wine you're going to find on a supermarket shelf. This is a wine that is going to take a little bit of hunting out. It's not produced in huge quantities, but it is produced in decent quantities. It does get exported, and if you live somewhere like uh, the USA, anywhere in Europe, some places in the Far East as well, the chances are that you will find a bottle of this. And this is the benchmark that we will, uh, that we will follow for the rest of the series. A new good Italian wine every month. And I hope you enjoy coming along for the ride. So, with this Nebbiolo d'Alba, we'll round things off by giving it a, a score. And it would be surprising, wouldn't it, if it, was, uh, if it was a low score. A good wine, 8 out of 10. But you mark this on potential and you're, you're pretty much nudging the uh, 8.5, 8.75s as well. So it's a wine that you, I promise, will enjoy. We will see you in a month's time for the second in this New Look series. In the time being though, thanks for watching. We'll see you again very soon. Cheers and goodbye. Mm -hmm.